So what's going on guys, Kades here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best monk build in Diablo Immortal. So at the start I will explain how to play this class. Then we will look into the best skills, rotations and attributes that you want to use. Then later we will go over the awakening, best stones, where to use your paragon levels and even which gems you want to use on your gear. And then lastly I will show you the best gameplay. So you would know how to get out your abilities, the highest damage possible and much more. So, if this sounds interesting to you, then let's get right into it. So, Monk in the endgame is an agile fighting class that in PvE can deal quick hits and does pretty nice DPS, resulting in a fast and melee fighting style that can kill huge amount of monsters in just few seconds. So, as you can tell, the playstyle for this Monk build is action-packed and you will be able to use different skills together to create a bunch of devastating combos and much more. So then let's move over to the build, and at the start I will show you the best DPS build, and then later I will show you another second build, which you only want to use if you want to be a support or in a group. So with all of this said, for your first build, you want to go with the Fist of Thunder, Mystic Strike, Exploding Palm, 7 Sided Strike and Mystic Allies. So first of all, for the first ability we have the Fist of Thunder, and the skill will teleport you to a nearby enemy, and your character will unleash a rapid amount of punches, that each deal damage. You can as well teleport after every third hit. Then plus you get an ultimate ability, which is called the Lightning Flux. So when you activate it, your first of Thunder skill will be upgraded. So now you will be able to teleport to the enemy right away, and each one of your hits will generate a thunderstorm. Thunderstorms deal damage and knock the enemies away. And you also gain a shield which absorbs damage equal to 20% of your maximum HP. Overall this is the best and most efficient single target skill that is useful to quickly move between groups of enemies and deal the highest damage possible. Then moving over to the second ability which is the Mystic Strike and this skill will dash your character forwards and leave a spirit behind that will return to you pulling all enemies in its path and dealing damage. It can be used the maximum of 3 charges. Overall this is the monk's number one mobility skill and should be included pretty much in every single setup. It is amazing to speed up farming for easy content or to help out in dodging enemy attacks from dangerous monsters and much more. Then for the next ability we have the exploding palm and the skill will attack enemies in one direction, damaging and inflicting bleeding on them for 5 seconds. Enemies that die while bleeding will explode, damaging nearby enemies for maximum of 2 charges. Overall this is the monk's best AOE ability and it's excellent at decimating big groups of weak enemies. So then for the next ability we have the 7 sided strike and this skill will dash rapidly between nearby enemies, striking 7 times and of course dealing damage each time. Overall this is amazing skill because it has great mix of single target and AOE damage. Additionally you become immune during its animation so it can be used to dodge dangerous attacks and much more. And then lastly the 5th ability is called Mystic Allies that summons 2 spirits that fight by your side. They have 100% of your HP and deal damage with their basic attacks. Overall this ability is amazing for single target boss fighting and because of our legendaries which I will show you in few seconds we will be able to do huge amount of damage and reduce the cooldown by 40%. And then last but not the least, this build is meant for super high damage. But in case if from time to time you want to be a support for your team, then a good alternative is to use the second build. So here we switch the Mystic Strike for the Imprisoned Fist, and then we switch the 7 sided Strike with the Inner Sanctuary. But you want to use this support build only when doing group content, and only if you want to sacrifice a bit of damage for more buffs and that's about it. So then moving over to the rotation, and you first of all want to start by running around the dungeon or map, and use the Mystic Strike to dodge the incoming enemies. Then now use the Exploding Palm once to weaken the enemies. Then afterwards we use the 7 sided Strike and reapply the Exploding Palm for the second time. And we can use it again because it has 2 charges. And then lastly we use the Mystic Allies and then from here we just keep on spamming Fist of Thunder till our other abilities come back up. And then moving over to your support rotation in groups. And this time you first of all want to start by using the Imprisoned Fist to stun the enemies, then now use the exploding palm, then afterwards use the inner sanctuary, then use the mystic allies to finish any leftover mobs or to distract enemies if your group ever gets in trouble. And then from here just keep on spamming the fist of thunder, till your other abilities come back up. So then let's go over to the best monk attributes, and the main attribute that you want to get is strength, and then secondary attribute is fortitude. The way you do this is by using equipment that either way has strength or fortitude. And for your weapons you first of all want to prioritize how much damage it does and then secondary the attribute. So then moving over to your character and this is how your gear should look like. So first of all for your offhand you want to get the scalding storm and sock it in the blood soaked jade. 
we chose this item because of his perks that will give you exploding palm, now the option to inflict the chill effect on the enemies and slow them at the same time. And then if you awaken this item, then your exploding palm cooldown get reduced by 10%. Then for the main hand we want to go with the Rod of Echoes and suck it in the Seeping Bile. Then for your perks we get 15% cooldown reduction on the Mystic Ally skill and if we awaken then the skill life gets increased by 10%. Then moving over to the next one which is the leg armor called the companion's melody and we suck it in the power and command gem. Then for your perks we get to increase the duration of the mystic allies by 25% and if we awaken then the skills cooldown get reduced by additional 10%. Then moving over to the shoulders and we want to go with the discipline's weight and suck it in the fervent fang gem. Then for your perks we get to increase our 7 sided strike skill for 10% damage and if you awaken then the skills cooldowns get reduced by 10%. Then for one of the last items we have the chest armor called Breath of Incense and we suck it in the Berserker's Eye. Then for your perks, the 7 sided strike now can trigger an explosion which will kill all bleeding enemies and if you awaken, exploding palm cooldowns get reduced by 10%. And then lastly we have the helmet called Open Mind and we put in the Everlasting Torment Gem. Then for your perks, the Mystic Ally skills damage gets increased by 10% and if you awaken then now the Mystic Allies get 10% additional life increase. Then for your charm you want to get this exact piece that gives all of your skills that you use damage increase. And then last but not the least for your neck we go with the subjugator and suck it in 1 ruby, 1 citrine and 1 aquamarine gem. Then for your finger get the prisoner and suck it in 1 tourmaline gem. Then for your other finger get the turnkey and suck it in again 1 more tourmaline gem. Then for your hands get the mailed fist and suck it in 3 tourmaline gems. Then for your waist get the goaler and suck it in 3 topaz gems. And then lastly for your feet get the tyrant and suck it in 3 sapphire gems. And then just before we move on to the next part of the video, I want to clarify a few things on the armor. The exact items and gems I'm showing you are the best of the best. So it does not mean that you have to get perfect 5 out of 5 star gems or rank 20 items. But you simply use whatever is the best available on your character and bit by bit when you get these gear pieces and gems, start equipping them and this is how your full end game build will look like. And if you're ever interested in how to farm these items, then watch my video on what to do after level 60. And there I will explain everything in detail. So then moving over to Awakening. And legendary items in Diablo Immortal can be awakened. To unlock another perk on your item. To awaken a legendary item you need the item itself and a legendary gem at rank 10. But when you can, your priority should be awakening the leg armor called Companion's Melody. Then your shoulders called Discipline's Weight. Then your main hand called Rod of Echoes. And then lastly your half hand called Scalding Storm. And then from here you can awaken whatever item you want in whatever order you prefer. So then moving over to the gems, and we already covered the best gems that you want to use on your items in the gear section of this video. But in case if you can get your hands on the best gems, then in the meanwhile, I want to give you a few best alternatives that will be good as well. So the best starter legendary gem is the Everlasting Torment, Fervent Fang, Berserker's Eye, Lightning Core, Power and Command and Sealed Weakening. And then for normal gems you want to get the Tourmaline, Sapphire and Topaz. All of these gems will be useful and good alternatives. But like I said for the best of the best, watch again the gear part of this video. So then moving over to the charm. And like I said when we were looking into what gear we want to use, this charm that will give you bonuses to Mystic Allies, 7 sided Shike, Exploding Palm, Mystic Shike and Fist of Thunder is the best of the best. But especially at the beginning it's not that easy to get. So if this is the case then your charm priority should be on having the Fist of Thunder, then Exploding Palm, then 7 sided Shike, then Mystic Allies and then lastly the Mystic Shike. If you have at least a charm with few of these abilities then that will be already really good. But now you know at least what bonuses are the best and how much they're worth by ranking. And then lastly like all of us know we can upgrade and rank up our gear and gems by salvaging gems and those items to then improve the ones that we use. But there's one last final endgame feature that is called the family bonus stones. So when one of your primary 6 gear pieces reach rank 6, you can reforge that gear and improve it even more by putting in a reforging stone. And the 3 best stones for monk is vengeance stone, wildfire stone and tremor stone. But like I've said many times, all of this is meant for super late game. So just try to get as high rank on your items as possible and slowly start upgrading them with stones. 
So then moving over to the last and most important feature, which is the Paragon system. So you start gaining Paragon levels after hitting level 60. Each level grants you one Paragon point that you can allocate into any open category. In general there are 5 categories and each one gives you more defense, XP bonuses and much more. So then for your monk right after you reach max level and start gaining Paragon levels, you want to put your points into the Vanquisher category. And this is how your first 50 Paragon points should be spent. So I recommend to unlock first of all the first damage node, then zeal, then second damage node and then the rat. And then from here you can unlock all the other nodes in whatever order you prefer. But then as I expect many players will be playing and watching this video many months in the game. So then for those players with Paragon level 100, this is how your Paragon tree should look like. And then lastly with players that have 150 points, then this is how it should look like in the very very late game and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Diablo Immortal builds that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have a nice day and I will see you in my next video. So take it easy, peace. Yo, I ain't here for the